Fantastic to have you all here, ladies and gentlemen, for the 50th anniversary of The Wayside. Yes. sincere welcome to the land of the Gadigal people, Aboriginal land. I welcome you to this, the 50th anniversary of the Wayside Chapel. It is truly a joy, a privilege to share this evening with you. 50 years of celebration of a wonderful haven. And of course, the motto says it all, love over hate. And it's love, love, love that epitomises the Wayside Chapel. I was talking to Graham a little while ago and he mentioned to me a most extraordinary situation. A long time supporter, I think it's a businessman from the eastern suburbs, first of all said to Graham, how much are you going to raise? And Graham said, $300,000 is the plan. And he said, oh, well, you won't get that. But then he added, he said, I'll tell you what, if you get the 300000 this person has said, I'll double it. I ask you to get up when you've got a second, go and look at that board and remember anything you donate is going to be double. So please dig deep. I'll tell you what, what you get out of it is karma. When I'm calling for your bids this afternoon don't, or this evening, don't be shy, but be generous because the funds that we can raise this evening not only go towards a magnificent cause, uh, but indeed the benefit of those that have been involved with the Wayside Chapel today and for the short, medium and long term. Normally when I come to speak about Wayside, um, stories of human turning and transformation just ooze out of my skin. And I'm very lucky that I can, after 10 years, have endless stories of people's transformation. But tonight, that's not what I want to do. Tonight I want to tell you a story about my transformation and about my turning, and about how Wayside has brought me to life. Five years ago, our son died. I couldn't tell you over the years how many times I'd said to Robin, my wife and my rock over here, that I reckon I could cope with just about anything life dished up except losing one of the kids. People grieve in different ways, I needed Wayside's constant demand that I get on with the next thing. And I did, but I have to admit that I went into a kind of an autopilot mode. I was doing it, but I was doing it by autopilot. So one day I was at my desk and I realised all of a sudden that I was late for a meeting. And I jumped up from my desk and I ran down the stairs and I ran towards the front door and there was a very shabby looking man in the front door that wasn't going to let me pass. So I veered to the left and he veered to the right to make sure I wasn't going to get by. So I veered the other way and he veered the other way. I wasn't going to get past. So I started to feel around in my pockets for a few dollar coins because it's amazing how that fixes things around here. Well, he wasn't interested in that. So eventually I looked in his face and he had a goofy look on his face and he stepped up to me and he threw his arms around me and he kissed me on the side of the face and then he whispered in my ear, that was from your son. That was a moment of transformation for me. That was the moment of my turning. Gaz showed me that love was everywhere to be found and everywhere in need of me. 
I must say that when the idea of the wayside having a dinner like this first came up at the board, uh, I, watched, I was actually an opponent. I sincerely thank everybody who has proved me wrong. And I particularly want to thank the team of the wayside. Thank you to all of you for coming. Thank you for braving the weather and coming. Thank you for parting with whatever you parted with. Um, over 80% of Wayside's income comes from private people who make gifts. And we would not be here if it wasn't for you. So our deepest, deepest, widest thanks. Thank you very much.